While unresolved mysteries are fascinating, they are also incredibly frustrating as you don't know what has actually happened. Because of that, in today's video, we're going to look through several unsolved mysteries that have finally been solved decades later. It's going to be a wild ride. From missing high schoolers to royal family imposters. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Before further ado, here are the mysteries. Cherry Miller and Pamela Jackson. The end of the school year in 1971 is supposed to be the most exciting time of the year for high schoolers, but not for two 17-year-old girls, Cherry Miller and Pamela Jackson, who never showed up to the last day of school party. Their classmates wondered why these two beloved girls never showed up, but both of them were not the type to misbehave or be up to something sketchy. So the wonder never evolved into worry, at least for the night. As in the following days, the news quickly spread all around the neighborhood that the girls were missing and never came back home after leaving the party. No one knew where the girls were and the investigation went cold until 42 years after the disappearance. The car the girls drove was finally found upside down in a creek. The vehicle contained the remains of both girls and belongings of them in surprisingly great shape. The driver's license, purses, and even letters that girls carried were easily identifiable even after four decades of being submerged underwater. There was no doubt that the remains belonged to the girls, and DNA testing confirmed it. The investigation proposed that it was an unfortunate accident, as both girls were not missing any clothes, were sitting in the front seats, and the car was in the highest gear. No traces of trauma, injury, and crime was detected. The mystery lasting over 40 years was finally solved, but it had unfortunate consequences. One man named David Licken, who was a classmate of both Cherry and Pamela, was already sentenced to 227 years in prison for charges of murder and rape of these two girls. At the time the remains were found, he had already spent a decade in prison, but newfound evidence suggested that he is in fact innocent. The last upsetting detail of this story is that Pamela's father, who spent 42 years in mystery and uncertainty about the fate of his beloved daughter, had died just five days before the remains were found and never got to know what happened to his daughter. David Lee Niles 72-year-old senior named David Lee Niles just couldn't catch a break at the tail end of his life. He got diagnosed with cancer and his mental health deteriorated due to depression. One day, on October 11, 2006, his friend managed to get him out of the house to meet up at Jake's Bar, a local pub. Niles didn't have anything better to do that night, so he went. But, to the misfortune of many, that was the last day David Niles was seen. He just vanished into thin air, leaving no traces. Even the car he drove that day disappeared. His family and friends were upset, while the police were puzzled. It's unlikely that Niles decided to run away, and even less likely that he was kidnapped. The police investigation bore no fruits, until almost a decade later, in 2015, one man got up with a lift to decorate a Christmas tree, when he saw a huge object at the bottom of the pond nearby. Upon further inspection, he noticed that the object is a car. He instantly called the Kent County Sheriff Department, and police quickly showed up. The excavation of the car revealed that it was a car, but not any car. It was a car carrying the decomposed remains of David Lee Niles. The pond was just a half a mile from Jake's bar, where Niles was spotted for the last time, and the wallet found on the dead body carried Niles' ID. There was no question whether the remains belonged to the senior that disappeared almost 10 years prior. The only unanswered question is, whether it was an accident or suicide. The terrifying piece of this story is that the car submerged in the pond was visible all these years on Google Maps. Niles' dead body in a vehicle spent a decade visible to everyone on the maps, rotting away, while his family lived in mystery for an entire decade. Elizabeth Haunch and Marsha Haunch. New Britain, 1995. The body of a teenage girl is found. The autopsy reveals that she died because of gunshot wounds 
so police know it was a homicide. Two months later, eight miles away, a second body is found, this time of an adult woman. Autopsy reveals the same death cause. Two murders close to each other indicates that it could be a work of the same murderer. DNA testing reveals that both victims are biologically related. That is, the woman is the mother of the girl. There's also another detail connecting both victims. They are unidentifiable. No one knows who they are. Police are puzzled, as there are no missing person reports filed in recently that could be of those two victims. The investigation stalled for almost 20 years, until in 2014 when straight out of nowhere, police received information from one family that was looking for a woman and her daughter, who disappeared back in 1995. Upon further inspection, the investigators managed to confirm the identity of two bodies found 19 years ago. The victims were Elizabeth and Marsha Haunch, the same women that the family was looking for. While the family had mixed feelings about finally knowing what had happened to both women, police started working on solving the murders, and quickly enough they succeeded. In 2017, three years after the ID confirmation of the victims, the murderer was found. His name? Robert Haunch. He was an ex-husband of Marsha Haunch and father of Elizabeth Haunch. The family separated back in 1988, but they got back together in 1995 just two months before the murders took place. No one knows the exact reason why Robert decided to murder his ex-wife and daughter, but he got away with it for so long because he lied to Marsha's family that they are moving to Australia. Sadly, Robert didn't move there. Instead, he took two lives, moved to Ohio, and started a new family. As the crime was solved, he was sentenced to life imprisonment for his inhumane act of cruelty. Grand Duchess Anastasia in 1918, Russia was going through a complete turmoil. Just a year prior, the Russian Empire collapsed, and the Soviets took over after the October Revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin. The country was experiencing a civil war, and the last emperor of Russia, Nicholas II, was overtaken. However, he was still alive, and his life symbolized monarchy and its chance of resurrection in Russia. To avoid it, the entire Tsar family was executed by soldiers, including his wife, son, and four daughters. The bodies were burnt and buried at an unknown location. However, the youngest daughter, Anastasia, managed to survive the execution and escape her death by nothing short of Rasputian magic. No one knew her whereabouts, but two years after the execution, a mysterious woman tried to kill herself by jumping off the bridge in Germany. Fortunately, she failed and was saved by a German sergeant. The woman was brought to a mental institution by police officers. Strangely, she had no identification documents and not only refused to identify herself, but was even reluctant to speak at all. She was quickly nicknamed Miss Unknown and spent the next two years in Daldorf Asylum, where it was noted that she spoke German in a Russian accent. The rumors that she's the missing Grand Duchess Anastasia began to spread. Multiple Russian emigres wanted to see the Miss Unknown, some of them believing that she was, in fact, the last living successor of the Tsar. While others doubted it, the woman received a temporary certificate of identity with personal details of Grand Duchess Anastasia and was given the full name of Anastasia Tchaikovsky. The rumors were sufficient enough to bring in Tchaikovsky financial support from all kinds of people. For example, in 1922, Baron Arthur von Kleist gave her a room in Berlin to live in. After that, Prince Valdemar of Denmark, who was a distant relative of the Tsar, funded her travels. And in 1927, another relative of the Tsar, Duke George of Luchtenberg, gave her a house in Bavaria. However, other relatives of the Tsar were more skeptical of the entire situation. Serena's brother hired a private investigator named Martin Knopf to find out whether Anastasia is actually the Grand Duchess. After some digging, Knopf found the truth. The woman who mysteriously appeared in Germany and began claiming that she was Grand Duchess was actually a factory worker from Poland named Franziska Szymskowska. Her story was tragic as her fiancé died in the war and she got terribly injured by an accident in the factory. As a result of it, her mental health went astray. 
and she got locked in an asylum. She escaped it and tried to kill herself when she was saved by German police and got brought to another mental institution. Although the evidence was clear that this woman is not the Grand Duchess, some people still believed her story and continued to sponsor her. She ended up in the US, married a history professor, and lived a relatively wealthy life until she died from pneumonia in 1984. However, some people continued to believe that she was the Grand Duchess, even after her death. But in 1991, the remains of Tsar Nicholas II, his wife, and three daughters were found. The DNA testing confirmed that Miss Unknown was not the fourth daughter, but just an imposter from Poland with a troubled past. Thanks for watching. That was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Trust me, there are many more fascinating videos coming your way. You don't want to miss any. Have a nice one. See you next time.